Alright, what's happening guys? Try back again. Here to bring you another video. This video is going to be doing my review for The Walking Dead Season 3, Episode 9, The Suicide King. Yep, so The Walking Dead is back. And the hype... This episode lived up to the hype, I think. All the promos and everything. I know a lot of us were really excited. Of course, I, I was. Um, and I, I, I would have to say that overall, this was a fantastic episode. This was a great uh, start to the second half of uh, Season 3. Um, one of the better episodes, I think, uh, of the season, I'd say overall. I mean, you had a lot of things that I was really uh, wanting to see come into play. By the way, this uh, review will contain spoilers. We've had so much action throughout season three that we haven't really had a chance to slow down and see some good character development this episode brought in some amazing character development especially with the ending scene which we'll get to and discuss in a little bit probably near the end of the review so i'll go see uh, sequential here so we start off the episode at the very beginning uh, where we left off from uh the mid-season finale you have the governor, Daryl and Merle, and uh, you know the governor forcing them to fight each other to the death. So that was pretty exciting. And then, of course, as we all kind of knew from the promos, we were able to break it down and, and sort of uh, realize that uh, you know Rick was going to get him out of there. Happened just as we predicted, just as we thought it would. They get out of there, and then next thing, um, something that nobody really predicted, which is that uh, Merle and Daryl went off on uh, their own, or at least I haven't heard anybody, uh, you know, give a prediction and say they thought that was going to happen. Most people, including myself, uh, thought that Merle was going to come back to the prison with them, and I think that would have been the best decision, even though the, the problem with it would have been, though, is that could they keep Michonne or, or Glenn or Maggie from killing Merle? Um, and that right there, <laughs> that right there by itself, you know, don't know if they'd be able to do that, if Rick would be able to do that. Um, but they definitely could have gotten some good information from Merle about, you know, the governor, Woodbury, all this kind of stuff. So it's kind of um, strange that they that, that Rick didn't, you know, insist that they bring Merle back to get information about, you know, Woodbury. Because obviously what they started is, you know, going to be a war. So getting that information from Merle, I think, would have been the best decision. But of course, at this point, as we realize later on, Rick hasn't slept in what seems like a long time probably since what happened to Lori earlier on in the season. Definitely hasn't slept recently with, uh, you know, everything. Um, so, you know, that really didn't come into play. So Daryl and Merle going off on their own. Uh, as we can see from the preview for next week, looks like that will be um, pretty interesting. Pretty interesting to see. That'll give us a third sort of group to focus on. Because now we have, obviously, the prison with Rick and, and the guys and everybody. We have Woodbury. We had tons of characters there, um, only a few fleshed out ones. And then we have Daryl and Merle on their own, you know, going to who knows where. Who knows what they're going to do? Who knows where they're going to go? Are they going to stay in the area? Are they going to maybe go back to the farm? Does Merle know a place? Are they going to go back to their hometown, wherever they're from? I don't know. Um, that's interesting. So now we have the three, you know, things going on at once with different locations. So that'll make things kind of interesting, too, to be able to, to switch between and see what's happening with the different storylines, uh, all intertwining, of course. Um, we also found out from Carol that, uh, that he's been gone a week already, which, because it's all in one episode, you don't really think of time passing in that way. You wouldn't really think that there, you know, a whole week has passed since uh, Daryl left. Uh, in my, my understanding through watching it, unless she said that, would have been that it was all like, the same day, like he, like Rick gets back and they're all doing the thing. She's going to sleep, whatever, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, didn't really get a time skip sense there until she she mentioned that. Um, so there's that. Now Michonne, of course, is passed out at this point. Uh, apparently has a concussion or whatever, and then Rick wants her to leave, which I think is pretty interesting because that's a lot different from what they did in the comic book series. You know, the comic book series was kind of like Michonne came and almost right away she was just assimilated or joined. You know, it wasn't too much trouble. But in this, uh, it seems like that might not be the case. So we'll see what happens with that. And um, moving on from there. So Daryl and Merle go off on their own. Um, zombies getting into Woodbury. That was kind of a cool scene there where you see uh, the zombie open up the, the metal plate, go in, and the guy afterwards getting getting bit. And that was pretty exciting, too, because it kind of came out of nowhere. He didn't expect it. Then Andrea takes care of it. By the way, Andrea's speech at the end was 
brutal, man. Oh my god, brutal. That that must that's got to be the only thing that I didn't like about the episode was Andrea's speech. It wasn't very believable. It was just like, you know, I don't know, man. I just I just didn't like it. I just wanted to you know, I, Andrew's in a weird place as a character, and you just kind of want to see a little bit less of her kind of at this point, unless she makes a good decision in the future. So we'll see what happens with that. But that was kind of like, you know, I don't know. I didn't really like that too much. I didn't care for that at all. Um, okay, so you've got Tyrese and the others kind of waiting patiently. We saw the preview before where um, you have, we, we now know all their names for sure. You have Ben, Alan, uh, Sasha, and uh, Tyrese. Um and it was Alan uh, and Donna as well. Um, so she, she's gone at this point. They're burying her. You have uh, Alan who already is talking about mutiny. So obviously the thing with Rick at the end is not going to help. Uh, that's, for, that's for sure. It'll be interesting to see what happens with him and whether or not he does actually try something. Or if Tyrese you know, just shuts him up and whether or not he can actually fit in or not. Uh, also, uh, Ben, the, the younger, uh, I don't know if I want to call him a kid. He seems like he's like a teenager. Here, uh, obviously, in the complex was just a kid, like, uh, the same age or younger than Carl. Uh, and the TV series, obviously, older than Carl. Um, you know, probably, I, I get the sense he's probably about, what, maybe 16, 15, something like that. Maybe around um, Beth's age. I think that would, yeah, probably close somewhere around Beth's age. So, we'll see what happens with him, too. If you guys remember from the comic book series, uh, Ben was uh, a murderer. <laughs> so... I don't know. A lot of times, what they seem to be doing with the TV series is when you have a character like that, they seem to go a different direction. So maybe he'll be cool. We'll, we'll see what happens with that. That should be pretty interesting as well. So then Rick returns. A uh, pretty good scene to see him with Carl. And then he tells Carol that, uh, that Daryl's gone. So that I thought that was a pretty good scene. Some you know character development for her there. Kind of get to see how she feels about it and all that kind of stuff. And... Uh, you know, just have something happen with them. Because we don't really know at this point, like, if Daryl and Carol did do it. But they probably did. All right, moving on. So then you have, um, as I said before, Andrea with her really crappy speech. Did not enjoy that at all. Sucked. Um, then an interesting scene where you have Rick and uh, Beth hands him. Little ass kicker. <laughs> And, uh, and I also like how they wrote that on the side of her, like, crib type thing, whatever you want to call it. And he kind of looks at her, and then you hear, like, the sound go off and whatever, and he's kind of, like, losing it. Uh, now, th that's real cool, because you got to think about it. Okay, now, what does that mean? Now, she said Lori right before that. So is he thinking about Lori? Is, is that why, you know, you get the sound and he's kind of starting to lose it? Or is it because, you know, Beth kind of says she has Lori's eyes, and... He looks at the baby, and maybe he sees, like, shame. That would be sick, so maybe that's what it is. Uh, and then he starts to, you know, just lose it. Or maybe it's just, that, like I said, that he's kind of starting to cope with or finally realizing the situation that, hey, my wife is dead, you know, because he's kind of been in denial and been doing all these things and trying not to think about it. And now there's finally a slow period again where he can finally start to think about it. Um few more good lines between different characters. You have Herschel talking with uh, with Glenn, telling him he's like his own son, which was good stuff. Uh, talking with Maggie. Uh, just a lot of different uh, dialogue between the characters. And then, of course, the big uh, scene at the end uh, when Rick comes into the room. The big leader is here. And Tyrese and the others have been waiting patiently all this time <laughs> just to find out that the leader of the group is an effing lunatic. I loved it. Now, that scene was really interesting, too. Very intense, also. Uh, kind of like, as a viewer, like, you're watching it, and you kind of feel, like, embarrassed for Rick at the same time. You're just like, oh, man. Like, you know, it's it just, it, it was a really, like, thrilling and kind of uncomfortable feeling watching that. At least I got that from the uh, from the scene. A great scene, by the way. I loved it a lot. Okay, so the big, the, the most interesting thing about the episode is, who the hell was he looking at? That's what gets me, because... You look up now. I don't have the best quality on my uh, on my cable. Okay, I'll have to I'll better quality later if I can download or something and inspect the scene. But who was it he was looking at? Because I you, you see you see the arm because she's got like the white you know she's got like white on. Obviously it's a female. Uh, so I think white around here too. At first I was like, is that Michonne? What the hell? You know, uh, at the first part. But then afterwards it's kind of like you know. Okay, maybe it's not supposed to be Michonne, I don't think. 
but you know she's got like sleeveless thing and you can see you can see her arm right and I'm like thinking to myself I'm like is this supposed to be Lori because there's no way that's Lori Lori is anorexic as shit that arm is not hers I love how he pulls his gun out and then everybody just like all the people at Tyrese's group just like run they're like get out of here get out of here go um, and you know I'm not sure exactly where they're going with that because who is it supposed to be I can't really think of who that would be you know obviously you know it's not Shane <laughs> obviously it it doesn't look like Lori at all um I just don't know what to say I mean hopefully later on we'll kind of figure out who that's supposed to be or or what the situation you know may be with that uh I was thinking about it and I was thinking maybe you know I, I guess we'll find out you know I can't really judge it yet because we haven't found out who it is yet but I would think it'd be cool if they either went like the like the Lori route, like making it kind of look like Lori, but not being able to see her, because because that figure did not look like Lori's figure. I'm sorry, it did not. It had about 90 pounds on Lori. Okay, just saying. But um, I can't really think of who who that would be. Uh, either go the Lori route, make it really dark, or maybe I think it'd be cool to see like a like a like a nurse. Okay, just like some random like dark in the face and anything, but make it give it like a nurse outfit. Now, why would I say that? Well, I think that'd be kind of cool because then you'd kind of think like, you know, maybe Rick's thinking he's still in a coma or something like that. Or it could bring up, you know, you could start thinking about it like that and start thinking that maybe, maybe he's, you know, sleeping. He's in a coma all the way through. This whole thing's not real. Or, you know, maybe he's in denial thinking it's not real or, you know, one of these types of things. I think that would be interesting, too. But uh, the whole white dress thing, maybe wedding dress, I don't know. But they probably should have gotten an actress that looked more like uh, Lori, if that's supposed to be her. Otherwise, I have no idea. You know, I just, I, I can't place it. I, I can't get it. Um, but regardless, it was a super exciting end to a really, really great episode. Mixed the action very well with good plot development. Of course, Daryl going off in his own with Merle, extremely exciting. Rick losing his mind, extremely exciting. Now we know why in the preview, Carl's saying you, you, sh you should quit being the leader, all this kind of stuff. And it makes sense after you see this, you know, why he would uh, why he would say that. You can place it now uh, as to why that would make sense for him to say that. Um, with the whole Woodbury thing, you got the disarray there. Andrea is going to go to see them pretty soon, sounds like, and see what the hell's going on. Uh, the governor seems to be, you know, just kind of losing it as well with everything that's happening. Um, you know, not giving speeches and all, all that kind of stuff. So that's interesting there. So we really have uh, three things at once going on here that are all extremely interesting. Uh, Tyrese's group, how are they going to fit in? How are they going to react now that they kind of think that Rick is insane? And uh, will they try to mutiny? Will they try to leave? What will they do? Because obviously he is dangerous at this point uh, with the way he's been acting and everything. Um, aside from that, you know, I don't really have too much else to say. Kind of a quick review tonight, but I'm extremely tired, so that's why it's not going as well as usual. But anyway, uh, I'm going to give the episode a 9 out of 10. Uh, I thought it was awesome episode, really great to get back into it, see The Walking Dead again. We got seven left this season, and it really looks like season three overall is going to end on a really good note, I think. Um, even Maybe even surpassing the comic book series in terms of uh, excitement and everything like that for the prison story arc. Um, Zombie Kill the Week, I almost forgot, would probably go to... Okay, there was a couple good ones uh, this week. I would probably have to go with um, maybe the governor's underhand shot. That was pretty cool because he just like effortlessly was like underhanded to shot this in the head with the gun. So that was pretty cool. Andrea's one was pretty good on uh, that really cool, great makeup effects on that walker that was eating that guy in Woodbury. Um, or Merle's was pretty good too where he where he was, you know, punching him with the uh, the metal thing and just beating his head in the ground. Or Glenn's where he, he, he actually, it was almost like a judo throw. It threw him out of the, threw the zombie out of the car and then stomped its head in. I think I'd have to go with Glenn's actually, even though the governor's was underhand was pretty cool. So anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think about uh, what's going to happen next. Very exciting. Do my prediction video probably tomorrow or the next day. Um, Awesome episode. Awesome, awesome stuff. Anyway, that's it for this video, guys. I'm going to bed. This is Trev. Same piece.